Hi everybody and welcome back to Harry's Music Room. I want to thank you for watching and uh, subscribing if you have. And if you enjoy the videos that I do, uh, please subscribe. It helps me, uh, gives me the incentive to keep going and doing them. Uh, today's video is brought to you by Tiki Niki. Uh, it's a tiki bar in Kauai owned by Todd Rungren and his wife. And I bought it shot at the bar and I got it served in a little tiki niki shot glass kind of cool okay so the video is going to be TV and movie celebrities who have put out records um, it's going to be mostly 45s I went through about over 3,000 45s to find these particular records so let's get started I'll go through them as quick as I can Annette Annette Funicello, original Mouseketeer on the Mickey Mouse Club, put out many records uh, for the Disneyland label Vista. Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi, of course they went on to fame with the Blues Brothers. And the Blues Brothers had uh, pretty much most of the Booker T and the MGs as their band, which uh, made it a really, really good album. And then, of course, John Belushi did uh, Animal House, and here's his version of Louie Louie. And Elwood Blues and the uh, Wilson Pickett. Uh, Elwood Blues Review featuring Wilson Pickett. And the Blues Brothers doing Soul Man. And then next we have one of the best known sex symbols of the 60s and a favorite of John Lennon and the Beatles in general Bridget Bardot and this is a very private affair and Sidoni and this is a very very early pressing on MGM Next, we have um, Terry Bradshaw. Terry, uh, of course, quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the current sports analyst. Uh, yeah, he put out some records. He put out some country albums. I'm so lonesome I can cry and making plans. This is a promo copy. And from TV and movies, Walter Brennan. You may remember Walter Brennan from a TV show called The Real McCoys. Um, he's one of only three male actors to have won three Academy Awards. The other two are Jack Nicholson and Daniel Day-Lewis. This song here, Old Rivers, is a really sad song. It's about a young boy that has a neighbor who has a farm and he's always out plowing the field with his mule and uh, the man's name is he calls him Old Rivers well, and of course Old Rivers ends up passing away but, and then there was another song Walter Brennan did called Yesterday When I Was Young which uh, I know it by um, you know, who's the guy from Hee Haw there anyways uh, oh Roy Clark I, I, and I really like Roy Clark's version uh, and then we have Carol Burnett, one of the very first women to have their own variety show on television. Enter Laughing. What an appropriate title, huh? And then the other side, Georgie Girl. And uh, Carol Burnett um, was nice enough to sign a record album for me through the mail. Uh, I tried to get uh, Julie Andrews to sign it, but she wouldn't do any signing through the mail uh, and just said she stopped doing autographs altogether. Um, and then we have uh, a person who started on the Carol Burnett show and ended up doing her own spinoff series, Vicki Lawrence doing That's the Night That the Lights Went Out in Georgia. That's a song I like a lot. Because little sister don't shoot when she, or don't miss when she aims her gun. 
Um, after Carol Burnett and Vicki Lawrence, we go to half of Penn and Teller. This is Penn with a band called Captain Howdy. So, next we go to Keith Carradine with a song called I'm Easy. Uh, very good song. He was in uh, the movie Nashville where he sang that song. And then we have uh, Dr. Kildare, Richard Chamberlain. Dr. Kildare, uh, the Thornbirds. Um, what else did he do? Uh, Shogun, one of my favorites, Shogun. And he also was the first person to play Jason Bourne in the Bourne Identity for a, a TV movie of it. That came, I think came out in 88. Anyways, I mailed a couple of record albums to uh, Richard, and he was kind enough to sign them and send them back to me. And then we have uh, Joan Crawford, who uh, started out in silent movies. Uh, famous movie she was in was Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Uh, Blue Oyster Cult actually did a song called Joan about her. And that's on their Fire of the Unknown Origins album. Uh, they did a video for that song, which MTV banned because it was sexually suggestive and then next we have uh one of my favorite tv shows growing up was uh, uh the rifleman and this is uh johnny crawford who at 12 years old was hired on to play the role of mark mccain the son of lucas uh at 13 years old he was nominated for an Emmy for that same uh, show. Sadly, he died uh, in 2019 from complications of COVID and Alzheimer's. And then we have Tim Curry. Everybody knows Tim Curry. Rocky Horror Picture Show. And then uh, we have James Darren. James Darren starred in uh, the TV, or I mean the film, Gidget with Sandra D. He was also the voice of Yogi the Bear in the 1964 animated uh, show, movie, Hey There, It's Yogi Bear. Um, he had a lead role in a TV show called The Time Tunnel. And in the mid-80s, he played officer James Corrigan on T.J. Hooker. Uh, his popularity rose uh, with his appearance on Star Trek Deep Space Nine where he was a holographic crooner called Vic Fontaine. Interesting. And after James Darren we have uh, Patty Duke. Patty Duke played uh, two roles in the Patty Duke show. She, they were identical cousins. One was from uh, Britain and one was from the U U.S. And she played both, obviously, both uh, cousins. Um, she also played in The Miracle Worker, a film where she per portrayed Helen Keller. And uh, she won an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress in that. She was married to John Astin, who played Gomez Adams on The Adams Family. And she is the mother of Sean Astin, who played Sam in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So quite a bit of history there for Patty Duke. And then here's a surprising one. Clint Eastwood. Look at this. How early is this record on the Gothic label? Um, made spaghetti, you know, he was made famous with the spaghetti westerns. He was the mayor of Carmel by the Sea in 2000. 
He's 91 years old. He's still going strong. Um, I, I, I think if he had one flaw, it was probably putting Sandra Locke, who was his girlfriend in his movies at the time. I didn't think she could act, but that's just me. And then we have uh, Vince Edwards. Vince Edwards was Ben Casey, Dr. Ben Casey on television. And uh, he was born Vincent Edward Zoine, Z-O-I-N-E. Um, he was a twin, the youngest of seven you know, children in his family. Compulsive gambler and said he sacrificed a good portion of his career to the addiction of gambling. And then next we have, uh, you should know this one just from her acceptance award at the Academy Awards where she said, you like me, you really like me. <laughs> oh, here's one more I was gonna show from Vince Edwards before we move on to Sally Field. Sally Field, wow, what a career. Winner of three Academy Awards, um, three Emmys, two Golden Globes, a Tony, two British Academy Film Awards. Uh, began her career playing Gidget on the TV show uh, from 65 to 66. Went on to The Flying Nun, which uh, is where most people knew her from. And then she had a short-lived series called the girl with something extra and she played uh, a newlywed who had ESP and she could read people's minds. Of course, this was the same period where we had I Dream of Jeannie and Bewitched. So this was trying to, you know, go along those lines of uh, a, a, a young married woman with special powers or whatever. Uh, she also played uh, Sybil, a woman who had multiple personalities. Uh, Smoking the Bandit, where she met and ended up having a long-time relationship with Burt uh, Reynolds. Uh, and then she was in Norma Ray, Steel Magnolias, Mrs. Doubtfire, and of course, Forrest Gump. Very talented woman. Uh, could she sing? I don't know. I really have not listened to these. So next we have uh, from Great Britain, David Frost, British TV host and journalist. Uh, he was a host of a satirical show called That Was the Week That Was, probably most famous in the United States for his interview of the disgraced uh, president, former president Nixon. And this is Away in a Manger and the House of Christmas. And this David Frost and Billy Taylor actually did kind of a jazz uh, Christmas album together where he narrated some of it. And then we have George Goble, actor, comedian, who started a, or had a weekly variety show from 1954 to 1959. And you may remember him from as a regular on Hollywood Squares. But this is Are You a Turtle? Backed with Old Sam by Lonesome George Goble. Next we have uh, Don Grady from My Three Sons. Don was a drummer in the band called The Yellow Balloon, and the B-side is just the same song played backwards. If you play it, it's a bow backwards, just like uh, the flip side of They're Coming to Take Me Away. Um, he was in uh, also uh, Mickey Mouse Mouseketeer, uh, played Robbie Douglas on My Three Sons. He also, when, after that, he wrote music for TV shows. He wrote the music for Blake Edwards uh, comedy called Switch and he did the wrote the theme song to the Phil Donahue show and from my three sons we go to Bonanza with Lauren Green Lauren uh, a Canadian born in Ottawa Ontario he was a newsreader on CBC's National News and they gave him the nickname 
The Voice of Canada. His notable TV shows were, of course, Ben Cartwright on, on Bonanza uh, and Commander Adama in uh, the original Battlestar Galactica and Galactica 1980, both of which I have never seen. I'm just not a sci-fi guy. And uh, he did a spoken word song called Ringo, which was a, a hit, top 40 hit based on the real-life outlaw, Johnny Ringo. And you may remember him from his uh, Alpo dog food commercials as well. Next, we have Andy Griffith from uh, The Andy Griffith Show. Uh, this is a funny bit about what that he does about football. Um, one of his best-known films was The Face in the Crowd, which... Uh, could have been the story of uh, our most recent, uh, I don't even know what to call him. Uh, I don't like to talk about the guy. But if you've seen a face in the crowd, you know what I'm talking about. And he was also in No Time for Sergeants. Um, and then after the Andy Griffith show, he went on to Matlock. And this is an EP on Capitol. And then next we have one of my favorite songs, MacArthur Park, written by Jimmy Webb, sung by Richard Harris, Irish actor known for the movie A Man Called Horse and Unforgiven, two Harry Potter movies. But uh, this song, written by Jimmy Webb, was originally for the band The Association. They turned it down. As it would turn out, um, Richard was at a party and met Jimmy Webb there and told him that he would like to do an album. And uh, so Jim thought, well, he's not really serious. But later, he, he sent Jim uh, a uh, telegram and said, I want you to come to England. I, I want to I make a record. So Jimmy thought, okay, so he went, he, he flew to England and played him a few songs and and uh, nothing seemed to fit. And then the last song he played for him was MacArthur Park. And he said, I want to do that one. And the song is about uh, a relationship that's broken up. And Jimmy Webb said that uh, it's all true. He said everything in the song was visible in MacArthur Park. The trees, the cake that was left in the rain, all of those things I talked about are things I actually saw. It's a musical collage of this whole love affair that kind of went down and bad, went bad in MacArthur Park. That same love affair was the uh, inspiration for Jimmy Webb to also write By the Time I Get to Phoenix. So, interesting backstory on this song, but I just love it. I even like... Uh, um, the the cover version by um, uh, oh what was her name uh, uh, Donna Summer that's it and then next we have um, there was a TV show that was based on the cow sills and that was the Partridge Family so Shirley Jones played the mother she turned down the role of Carol Brady in the Brady Bunch. And uh, um, they suggested that she try out for the role of the Partridge family. And it also starred her real life stepson, David Cassidy, who was the son of Jack Cassidy. Jack Cassidy and Shirley Jones had another son Sean Cassidy, who went on to music stardom also. Um, she divorced Jack in, I, I don't know what year it was they divorced, but he had contacted her and wanted to get back together. And she didn't want to, she said no. And then on the evening, after that phone call, on the evening of December 11th in 1976, uh, she received news that his apartment had caught fire and that they had found Jack's body in the fire. 
and uh, she was kind of distraught over that and, and um, later ended up marrying uh, comedian Marty Ingalls. But uh, Shirley Jones. And then we have from the movie MASH, we have Hot Lips Houlihan, Sally Kellerman, nominated for a Best Actress in a Supporting Role. Then we have Audrey Landers. You may not know the name, but if you ever saw the TV show Dallas, she was uh, Afton Cooper on Dallas, who was a love interest of J.R. This is a promo 45. And she was on the show, I think, for four years. And we have next up uh, Jack Lemon. One of my all-time favorite actors. Mr. Roberts, uh, he won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in that one. Some Like It Hot with Tony Curtis and Marilyn Monroe. He was in Days of Wine and Roses, The Odd Couple, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, Save the Tiger, where he won an Academy Award. Uh, just great, great act. And he's been in so many comedies. I, I just... I love his movies. I just love his movies. So I had to buy the album when it came out here. So Jack Lemon, 180 gram vinyl with bonus material from Wax Time. And what would Jack Lemon be without his good friend, Walter Matthau of The Odd Couple? Um... Walter Matthau was also in the movie of Face in the Crowd with Andy Griffith. He was in King Creole with Elvis and the Bad News Bears. And for whatever reason, he put out a record from a movie called Pete and Tilly, which is the love theme from that movie. Walter Matthau. And another duo. Uh... Jerry Lewis, born Joseph Levitch, L-E-V-I-T-C-H, uh, known as the King of Comedy. Lewis and Martin with Dean Martin, they made 14 movies together. His son uh, is Gary Lewis, so Gary Lewis and the Playboys. Um, and this is It All Depends on You. And let me sing and i'm happy in 1956 he received a call from judy garland's husband and manager saying that judy was unable to perform in las vegas because of strep throat and they asked if he could step in and just do a, some kind of a show for the night um he agreed to do it um got up there told a bunch of jokes clowned around with the audience while Judy and her husband sat off stage and watched. And at the end, he sang uh, two songs he'd learned as a child. rock a -bye, Your Baby with a Dixie Melody and Come Rain or Shine. And that made him decide he was going to start his singing career. So he did. And then we have uh, from the Andy Griffith Show, George Lindsay. Goober Pyle. Um, he was also on Hee Haw. Uh, Leonard Nimoy said once that, uh, that Gene Roddenberry's first choice to play Spock was George Lindsay. And Ernest Borgnine, in his autobiography, wrote, My hand to God, he turned down the part of Spock on Star Trek. So George Lindsay could have been Spock. This is an album I bought at uh, a record show. It's hard to see, but it's signed by, by him here. Well, there you go. He could have been Spock. And then next up we have James MacArthur. 
James MacArthur was a young actor, uh, most famous for a movie called Spencer's Mountain, which is what the Waltons TV show was based on. Uh, he made some movies for Disney, Kidnapped, Swiss Family Robinson, and then probably his most famous role of all was Dano, Bookum Dano, on Hawaii 5 from 1968 to 1979. Um, that TV show made him a very wealthy man, and he invested most of, the, most of his earnings in property in Hawaii. Next, from the Great North West and whatever whatever you call it, the Great North Wood, I don't know what they called it, Doug, Doug and Bob McKenzie, um, Canadian brothers who hosted, the, there we go, the Great White North, uh, a sketch on second uh, SCTV, second, what was that anyways, I forget now. Well, but anyways, uh, it was Rick Moranis and uh, Dave Thomas. And uh, most of their bits on that show were improvised on the spot. Uh, and, of course, this is their biggest, biggest, most, one of their most famous ones, Take Off and uh, L. Ron McKenzie. So, next we have, uh, oh, and then Rick Moranis also did uh, a, a song from the uh, Suddenly Seymour from the Little Shop of Horrors. Um, then we have the uh, one of the most famous villains from Batman, the Penguin, Burgess Meredith. Uh, he was in uh, Of Mice and Men. He played George in that, which really made him kind of made him a star. And he was in four different episodes of The Twilight Zone. Also played Mickey in the Rocky series. So he's been around. Um, during uh, the House Committee on Un-American Activities investigation, he was blacklisted and for the next 10 years really didn't work. Then we have another Disney star. We have Haley Mills, worked in numerous Disney films, Pollyanna, The Parent Trap, The Moon Spinners, uh, Trouble with Angels, That Darn Cat. Her father is John Mills, who played Father Robinson in the Swiss Family Robinson film by Disney. And her son is Crispin Mills, and he is the lead singer for the band Kula Shakir. I said that right. Next we have Ozzie Nelson from The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, uh, a daily type day in the life of a family and their son was david and ricky nelson which brings us to ricky nelson teen idol started out a, on his father's tv show became a huge singing star sold a bunch of records one of the more popular tv actors to actually make it in the music business Hello, Mary Lou. He was born uh, Eric Nelson and uh, got tired of getting flack in his later life for singing all, all people wanted to hear with the hits, so he wrote the song Garden Party. Um, married Chris Harmon, who is the sister of Mark Harmon of NCIS fame. Uh, and then they had two twins. Let me get stop this. So, anyways, that was a nice spam call. Um, he had twin sons uh, who formed a band called the Nelsons. And then in 1985, um, he perished in a plane crash. Uh, I was lucky enough to see Ricky and his band play at the grand opening of the Tacoma Dome. Uh, it was a free show, and just it was. I was really glad to get to see him. It was a good show. Uh, we're getting almost to the end here. So the next one we have is Fess Parker, best known as Davy Crockett for Walt Disney and Daniel Boone for NBC TV show. And then we have 
Joe Piscopo, another Saturday Night Live person, uh, put out a record with his uh, cover of Frank Sinatra. This is I Love Rock and Roll Medley. This one is signed. It was signed to a DJ in Seattle by the name of Gary Crow. I, I bought a small collection of stuff that belonged to Gary Crow. A lot of signed items. And then we have, uh, after Joe Piscopo, we have Burt Reynolds. Of course, Burt started out doing TV shows like Gunsmoke. He had a, a show called Hawk, where he played a Native American detective. Um, Smoking the Bandit, Deliverance, Semi-Tough, Cannonball Run. Um, Albert Broccoli, who was the producer of the James Bond movies, actually asked Burt to succeed Sean Connery as Bond. And Burt Reynolds told him, no, um, there's no way an American could play that role. Um, later, I uh, had a, a long-term relationship with Dinah Shore, who was like 20 years older than him, uh, which was uh, news. Uh, well-publicized uh, relationship there and he posed naked for Cosmopolitan magazine and then next up we have Telly Savalas Telly Savalas played Kojak the lollipop sucking police um, this is a cover of the bread song if if you do nothing else <laughs> Go look at the YouTube video for him doing this song, If. You'll never hear it the, the, the same again. And then we have Bobby Sherman. Bobby Sherman from Here Come the Brides. Uh, Jeremy Bolt. Bobby had a bunch of hits. He had a bunch of hits. Um, Little Woman, La La La, If I Had You. Easy Come, Easy Go. Seattle, Hey Mr. Son, Julie, Do You Love Me? Uh, just a lot of hits for this guy. He was pretty successful. And we have Rick Springfield. Rick Springfield, actually the Australian-American, started out as a soap opera star on General Hospital. And was on TV shows like Six Million Dollar Man, The Hardy Boys, Battlestar Galactica, and The Rockford Files. And then we have Philip Michael Thomas, better known as Ricardo Tubbs on Miami Vice. Uh, he also did the voiceover in the video game Grand Theft Auto Vice City as Lance Vance. And then we have Bruce Willis, born in Germany to a German mother and a military American father, moved to the U.S. when he was two, best known for Moonlighting with Sybil Shepherd, uh, who also did records of her own, um, the movies Blind Date, Die Hard, Pulp Fiction, and Sixth Sense. So Bruce Willis getting in on the act and then for our very last one we have I say the best for last I guess um, when we talked about sex symbols from the 60s uh, I don't think there's a bigger there was a bigger sex symbol than Marilyn Monroe and here we have it Marilyn Monroe, born Norma Jean Mortensen, she became one of the most famous sex symbols of all time. Um, she was born and raised in Los Angeles. Her mother gave her up when she was like six years old or so. She never knew her dad. She lived in orphanages and uh, foster homes for a number of years. Uh, and didn't like going to the to the orphanage and 
in order to not go back to the orphanage. She married a 21-year-old neighbor boy uh, from a foster home she was staying at. Uh, he was 21 and she was 16, and that was how she got out of going back to the orphanage. In uh, 53, she did uh, some nude photos, um, which they thought was going to derail her career, but it actually helped her career. Um, those photos were later used for the very first episode, or, uh, very first issue of uh, Playboy magazine. Um, she was, you know, married to Joe DiMaggio, married to playwright Arthur Miller, uh, supposed to be romantically involved with John F. Kennedy. Um, in 62, she died from a drug overdose. Um, the death was ruled a suicide because the amount of uh, dosages found in her body were several times over the lethal limit. So that's my uh, video for TV and movie celebrities who have made records. I hope you liked it. And thanks for watching. Ciao.